Good morning, everybody. Here we are back live. What an exciting day it is today. Um, it's Thursday. Now, you may say what's exciting about Thursday. Well, yesterday was Wednesday and we made it to Thursday. And I don't count days as like, oh, we made it, but we got another opportunity for an incredible day. Starting off with some hydration to make sure that my brain is working to the maximum of its ability. Make sure you stay hydrated. Oh, just putting that back on the table. Hey, good morning. I see people showing up. It's great to see you here. Please say hi. Um, I was just saying Thursday, Ginny, Ginny's in the house. That's great. We're going to be laughing together in the house. That's uh, good to see you, Ginny. Thanks for being here. Um, and Craig is in the house. Craig, uh, yesterday I saw your heart rate getting up there yesterday um, in uh, Kathy's class. I'm having to think back now. So much has happened between Kathy's class and, and this moment now. So hopefully we're going to get your heart rate up again today. It is Thursday um, and it's a more advanced workout. I have a couple of challenges today um, that I haven't practiced. The reason I haven't practiced them is I want to experience what you're going to experience for the first time. I've thought them through. I know what they're going to be. And then we're going to figure out together how to get the best results. Because again, I want to figure out um, what's going on. Mum, great to see you here. Good morning, Mum. Um, thanks for being here. And uh, Kirk, good morning. I heard it's going to be really hot. I heard there's uh, a heat wave going out in Arizona. Now, for those of you that know Arizona, a regular heat is about 100. So imagine what a heat wave is down there. Stay uh, hydrated, stay cool. Hope the air conditioning's working down there, Kirk, and uh, get through it safely, my friend. Uh, George, good morning to you. Um, um, good to see you. Uh, here, George, and uh, look forward to the workout with you today. I just jumped my thoughts. I saw Craig. Craig, you're skipping. You've uh, strained your lower back above the right hip. That's right in here. Um, one thing, obviously, stretching is important um, for that. I don't know whether you take ibuprofen. I don't recommend any medications without knowing other things that you may be taking. But again, taking an ice pack would be great in there. Um, and then also a little bit of weighted loose. I'll show you this one here. Just take the red ball and place it against a wall. Just nice and easy. You don't have to do much. And just very slightly, if, if this, imagine my hand was the wall. I'm just going to lean back into it a little bit and move my body and adjust the ball till I can feel like it's a little bit of a light massage. The great thing there, Craig, is by being able to put it against the wall and lean on it, you can adjust the pressure that's on there very light. I know you said it's very sensitive right now. Um, but again, wishing you the best and thanks for being here. And watch through the class, hopefully. It's always great to have you here, even if you can't do it. Um, and you'll be back. You'll be back. If I know Craig, you'll be back. Um, Betsy, great to see you here. Thanks so much um, for being here, as always. Um, Never taken for granted. I know you're always here, Betsy. And when you're not, um, we miss you. But great to see you here. George, good morning, mate. Um, love that, mate. Good day, mate. Oh, that's Australian. All right, mate. That's English. Um, so, got a very interesting class for you today. It's going to be um, definitely challenging. For some of you that have seen the video that I posted earlier this morning um, about, was it last night? Anyway, whenever I posted it, um, it was so much about um, fast footwork. And again, I talk about it doesn't matter the age that you're at. It matters what we're doing to create the ability of the body to move, to react, to have that change of pace, to be light footed, to have that brain feeling what's happening. And the video I watched today kind of inspired me for today's class as well. Or whenever I post, I'm pretty sure I posted it this morning. Um, Make sure you have your chair with you. We're going to be doing a little bit of chair workout um, later on, but it's going to be advanced. So, and again, there's always ways around the advanced to adapt. And then I've already got my short bands on the board already to be able to work. You'll notice I still have the metal poles. Um, my leg is getting so much better, but that's the danger as you begin to take anything for granted. When you begin to feel better, you take things for granted, and that's when you re-injure them or overtrain them. So... We're going to be pushing it today, but I'm going to be feeling my body, but I'm so excited. Uh, I got a call from the, from the physical therapist. They want me to come in and start doing rehab with them. I was like, great, when are we going to start? And they said, uh, the first appointment we have is June 29th. 
I'm like, uh, that's three weeks away. And they're like, yeah, it's the first time we can get you in. I said, well, tell the doc, tell the physical therapist, we'll go for a talk, let's go for a run, because I'll be healed by that time. So I'll come in, you'll give me the green light, the uh, thumbs up, and I'm back in, because I'm training with 60 up, I'm training with my, my family out here. And we got goals that are too uh, important to slow down to fit somebody else's schedule. Um, good morning, Bob. Great to see you here. And I know Ben's typing. That's a good morning, Ben, as well. Great to see you here. And Patrick, Patrick's in the house. Great to see you here as well. Patrick, listen, it's going to be a tough workout today. Um, I've tried to keep it simple um, as far as not straining the body too much. And when I say too much straining is pushing the limits, not straining where there's any injury. And I will adapt. If I begin to feel that my uh, injury is being impacted by the workout, then I will slow down. Doesn't mean to say you have to. We've all got our own goals and our own lines. So, um, hey, good morning, Bob. Good to see you back here. I know you're off on Tuesday on your radio tour um, that started really early. So looking forward to uh, having you join us. It's going to be a tough day, Bob, today. Um, some of these exercises are going to be really challenging in a good, positive, simple way. But we're going to find out where we're at. Um, and again, like I said, if any of you have injuries, I know Craig, you got a little injury today and I'm I, um, sorry to hear that your back's hurting. Um, but sometimes you could do some of these exercises sitting in a chair or just lean forward in a chair and do some of the tapping or just sit, put your feet on the board and just rock it if you're able to. But again, even if it's one leg, just work in the left leg and it doesn't strain your, your back on the right. Every little bit of activity increases the heart rate, which increases the blood flow, which means we're getting our white, um, sorry, the red blood cells are then going around so we're able to oxygenate and that brings us faster healing. So smart, careful, but always making sure that we're doing uh, the maximum we can without increasing uh, danger, pain or um, injury. Good morning, Diana. Great to see you here as well. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, it's always great to see you here and, and everybody. You're uh, part, of, part of my family and I welcome you in all the time. Thanks so much for being here. It brings energy. Um, so this is my message for today. And it's so, um, so, um, uh, again, watching the video today. Of what, and you can go back and look at pictures and see things you used today. And my message today is look back to look forward. That's my message. A lot of people say, never look back. No, in my opinion, this is just me. Look back to look forward because behind us is everything we used to do that brought us wisdom and knowledge to then decide what we want to do. And when you look back and see the things you used to do and how powerful you were and you never used to you just get up and you just do things or sometimes out of necessity or emergency, you do things you didn't know you could do and look back to look forward. See, I'm all about goal setting, giving yourself goals. It's very hard to um, achieve your greatness if you don't have a target. And small targets don't bring big results, but, mold, but the big dream brings small steps along the way. So it's so important to, again, go back and look at photographs of things that you love, things you have to, that you in, then inspire to want to do again. And that will give you the passion to put the work in because there's a better future. If you did it before, you can do it again. That's much. Hey, Dad, great to see you with you. I haven't seen you in a long time. Uh, actually, no, you were in class a couple of uh, classes ago, I believe. But great to see you back here. And if you notice, um, my crutches are no longer there. My crutches are now over here. Um, and I'm not actually having to use them right now. So anyway... Great to see you all here today. We're going to get on with this workout. It's a slightly shorter workout, but it's going to be slightly more intense as well. And again, if I have to adjust because of my injury, I want you to keep going to the level that your body and more importantly, your brain, your mind wants you to go to, but smart. Okay, grab a quick drink of water. This is an advanced workout. And so... Um, with the advanced workout, we always start hydrated and start prepared. Okay, I'm stepping back to the board. You'll notice again the metal poles, it helps give me a little bit more support and stability. Now, what I want you to do is just start by tapping on the number one. And you're going to see how we're going to build this up today 
to have multiple areas um, of, of movement. Okay, we're just going in here, getting that heart rate, beginning to um, activate with the action, the movements that we're doing. There you go. Now, what I want you to do here is now tap one, tap three and down. One, three and down. And notice as you're going in here and you're moving, notice how the, the pressure on the foot on the ground changes. As I lean to the side, I feel a little bit more of an adjustment of the foot pressure on my left foot or the outside of my right foot. So again, the outside becomes more engaged the more we step to the side. Okay, just nice and easy, going at your own pace. Okay, we're gonna change this one up. We're now gonna go one on the board, one on number three, one on the floor behind number three and back in. So we go one, two, three, four. Left foot, one, two, three, four. Now, by going to the floor, you'll notice the leg you're standing on will bend a little bit to be able to tap the floor, so we engage the quad muscle just a little bit more to support our body weight as we bring the leg down to the ground. They are good. Three, four, one, two, three. And again, maybe if you're really advanced, just put your fingers on top of the board so that you can, um, again, notice how the soft tap on the board is not affecting the balance of the board, but the poles are here if you need to grab them. Good, okay, we're gonna advance this one onto the next one. We're now, good, we're gonna go five steps. We go one, two, three, now bring the board behind you into here, and then back down, and we go again. One, two, three, two, down. And notice how we're changing the whole time. Hey Sam, good to see you here. So we go tap one, tap three, tap three, come behind two, back to one. And again, one, three, three, two, one. And notice how it changes the strength and activation in the hips as you change that foot behind. It's a very small movement but it really helps create the ability to support your balance and the strength in your leg as you go to different foot movements. I guess I'm getting ready to go meet the queen. I can, oh no, I would bow, I wouldn't curtsy. There you go, behind, last time each side, one, three, tap three, tap two, tap on the one, come change leg, one, two, three, four, and five. Good, just give me some butt kickers. We're gonna loosen up those legs, but again, what we just did there was reactivate the pressure point connection between the brain and the feet and feeling strong and confident. These are not going to uh, be easy. Okay, what I want you to do now is just small little feet on the ground. This is something I never thought I'd be doing. Just small little feet. We're going back to the video that I posted today, and if some of you haven't seen it, go watch it after the class and see how even with the youngest, those kids were 10 years old that I was training, 10, 11 years old, and just keep those feet moving. And it, that was again, early development. Even though they could balance, we then advanced their balance, movement and agility so they could become better athletes. Now, here we go, fast feet, now stop. Oh, sorry, stop on two feet. And we go again, and if you notice in the video, I'd have them moving, and then stop. Here we go, small little feet. My feet are actually coming off the ground and freeze. And go back in and freeze. Now, if you want to, take your hands off. The poles freeze. And you can get those arms moving if you want, freeze. But if you're not quite confident enough, hold onto those poles and freeze. I'm gonna keep holding onto the poles because I wanna support my body weight while I'm going through this recovery. Good. Now what we're gonna do, which is like what I started with, we're now gonna run and then go on to one leg balance. So one, balance. And one leg fast feet, balance. And one feet fast feet, balance. And fast feet, balance. And fast feet, balance. And fast feet, balance. So we're going from quick to balance, and then quick, to balance and see how quickly, and you can do it without your hands if you want, in here, boom, 
I mean, with, with, you're doing it with your hands, but, and I can feel how my balance wants to just stay. So quick little movement and balance, good. Now we're gonna do it where we're gonna to step to the side and balance. Again, quick activation. Athlete training, quick. Now step to the side and balance. Then come back to the middle, jump to the side and balance. Come back to the middle, quick little steps, jump and balance. Come back to the middle, jump, balance. Here you go, you got it in here. Quick little feet, hand jump, balance. And it's just a small little thing. And if you don't want to jump, it's okay. You can just step to the side and balance. And notice how there's that quick recognition of the body to get over that foot and balance. Okay, I'm going to give you a little test now. This is the little game. Just walk those feet out nice and slow. And again, quick feet are critical to prevent falling because as you begin to change your body angle, the, the, to stay upright, you've got to pull your head back and get your feet underneath you. If your feet are slow, you can't get that head back. So make sure as you're going through here that we work on quick feet. So as we try and pull, the feet can come underneath and you'll stay. I'm going to say, boom, there's quick little feet and I'm able to save. Okay, here we go. We're going to go quick feet, two foot balance. And all you're going to do is listen and how quick can you react to what I'm saying? Quick little feet, left foot balance. Quick little feet, left foot balance. Quick little feet, jump right balance. Quick little feet, two foot balance. And if when you get there you want to take a hand off, feel free to take those hands off and see your balance. Left foot jump balance. Come back to the middle, fast little feet. Right foot balance. Quick feet, left foot balance. Quick little feet, right jump balance. Quick feet, left jump balance. Quick feet, two foot balance. And that's the end of the warm up, just to get us going get everything activated, get the brain working, get the body moving. What I'm going to do is push the ball to the right, place the ball of your foot and just stretch out a little bit on the calves. Again, just now the muscles are awakening. We, awakening. we want to stretch them before we start a harder activity. There you go. And change in there. I'm just reading some of the messages that are in there. I'm just stretching at the same time. Stretch again. Now, the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning and get out of bed is I spend five minutes stretching where my injury is, um, making sure that I loosen everything up before I engage. I also drink water as soon as I wake up in the morning. You want to lubricate. You don't want your muscles to be um, dehydrated, which again can cause more strain or tightness in them. So have a bottle of water by your bed before, you know, when you wake up in the morning and the first thing you do, have a little stretch in bed if that's what, what uh, the best place to start. I know uh, I like to stretch first thing in the morning to get those hips and legs loosened up, but have that drink of water. So again, I can start getting the organs working, functioning and, and my body fully hydrated. There you go, okay, grab a quick drink of water. Bob Eubanks wrote something in here, so you don't have fast little feet, your, yours are big and slow this morning. Mm. That's great, Bob. Um, we're gonna create fast big feet. Again, you'll never move faster than the work you put in. So just start off increasing that fast, muscle twitch fiber activation of the brain going move a little faster it's incredible you do that a few days how quickly your feet will begin to move faster you're awake but your muscles aren't don't tell your muscles that bob tell your muscles they're doing fantastic they're wide awake and we're going to challenge the day together okay here we go what i want you to do now step up on number two you're on the board and all we're doing we're going to work the hip flexor and get some heart rate going. So lift the leg up, touch the ground. We're doing 10 of these. Two, and three, and four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Good, step back, let's go to the left leg. And one, 
Two, now because I have a bad right leg, four, I'm barely touching the ground. Um, it's just a tap so I don't put too much weight on it. Eight, nine, and 10. Good, come back to the left side. Now what we're gonna do in here, step up on two, we're now gonna alter it, but again, work the hip flexor, but slightly more the adductor on the inside. So press down on three, and bring your knee up. Press down on three, bring the knee up. Down on three, that's three, and four. A whole strengthening program today, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good, take the left foot, push on the left, the right foot goes to number three, I'm gonna feel this one. Push, lift, and I want that foot touching, the, the right foot touching the left knee, three, and four. And again, we're using the hip flexor, but we're also going across and bringing the inside of the leg to strengthen up into the groin area. That's seven, eight, and nine, and 10. Good. Come back, just rock on two and two. We're gonna do that whole circuit again to strengthen the leg up. And again, what we're doing, if you notice, it's not just the leg that's lifting, the leg that you're standing on, those muscles are engaged in supporting your body weight and balance. Are you ready? Good, take the left foot onto the ground. We've got 10 of these. You ready? Here we go. One, and two, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can really feel this work in 10. Step across, take the right leg back. Here we go. And one, and two, and three, and four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bring your right foot to number two, left foot goes to three, push down. Ten. Here we go. One, and two, and three. And if you notice, four. I'm not really holding on to the, pack, the poles. I'm just resting my hands on top, so my legs are doing all the work. Eight, but they're there if I need to. Nine, last one. 10, bring the left foot down. Right foot goes to three. Here we go, 10 of these. One, and two, and three, and four, and five. You're doing great, come on. Six, and seven and eight, and nine, last one, 10, good. Just rock those feet out, side to side. You're doing fantastic, good job. Just rock it out. Now what I want you to do is step back off of the board. I'm gonna actually step with my left leg, just in there. Just shake those legs out, grab a quick drink of water, because we're moving on to the next exercise. Bob says, your son graduated from high school. Good, good, congratulations, Bob. From high school, you're pooped. Mm. Bob, he's the one that graduated. I don't see, <laughs> I'm guessing there was a big celebration party and all the other stuff that went on. So congratulations, Bob. Great to hear. Okay, next one we're gonna do now, take your right foot, and put it in the middle of the board. Now come and stand up. Now this is a great exercise for balance on the single leg. I couldn't have done this a week ago and it's so good to feel that progression. Now what you're gonna do is take your left leg back, keeping the, the board balanced. What we're working here, if I show you from the side, we're working the glute muscle in here. There'll be a little activation in the back, but don't lean back too much and don't lean forward. Just lift it as far as it will go, but we're working on the balance of the right leg and strengthening up the glute muscle on the left leg. Are you ready? Here we go. One, and only as high as you can go. Keep that chest up. Three, four, great job. Five, keep it going. Six, seven, eight, nine, last one, 10. Good. Push down on the feet, change the feet up. Left foot goes completely in the middle. Lift the right leg, find that balance, take the right leg back. Here we go, one and two. I see the exercise we're gonna be doing in a little while. 
there's going to be some, some uh, tough ones in here. I think that's eight, nine, keep that balance, ten. Good, change back. Now this one's going to be a much bigger challenge. Take your left leg, hold the balance and take it to the side and back, side and back. This is very hard to do and keep your balance. Four, five, because obviously you're moving. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good, change the leg over, left leg goes in the middle. And notice as you take the leg to the side, you have to change the pressure point on your left foot to accommodate. Here we go, one and two, and to begin with, I'm not so good, three, four, but I'll figure it out, five, six, there you go, seven, my brain is adjusting, eight, nine, the pressure points, and 10, excellent. Bring the foot back in the middle, we're gonna do a second set. We're now going onto the leg, going to the back again. Small little movements. Here we go, lift that heel. One, my leg is staying straight. Two, three, four. Sorry, my left leg is straight. My right leg is slightly bent. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good, change legs up. Bring the left leg. Remember, the, the left leg will stay slightly bent so the muscle engages in supporting the body. Right leg for me stays straight. If you need to bend it a little bit, that's okay because the movement is what we're trying to get after here. Here we go, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, last one, 10. Good, now we're going back to the side one in here. Right leg. Now slowly, one, and adjust, two, I over-adjusted, three, still over-adjusting, four, five, now I'm getting it, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good, change the legs up. Here we go, left foot in the middle, and try and find that adjustment right from the beginning. One, and two, I started better than the last time. Three, and four, and five, six, seven. Excellent, keep it going. Eight, nine, last one, 10. Brilliant, bring them down. Good, just put your feet on one and one. And what we do is just push the hip to the side. What we're doing now, because we just worked the glute muscle and the hip, and the hip obviously is included with lifting your leg to the back, we're now gonna loosen up those hip muscles and the hip joint as well, just with a nice casual lean and push. There you go, excellent. Whew, that wasn't so easy. Good, what do we do? I'm push down, I'm gonna push down my right foot, step back with the left, grab a quick drink of water. So Bob Luke Eubanks, thanks to the board, you can now put your pants on standing up. So is that what you mean by graduating, Bob? That's why you're so exhausted? Let me picture this. Last night, you were at your son's graduation, congratulations again, and they asked you to put your pants on standing up, and that's why you're so exhausted from the graduation. Does that sound about right, Bob? I know what you mean. It's funny how sometimes the smallest tasks um, expose our weaknesses, and yet when we can come back and do them again, how amazing it feels. So it's those small rewards. Okay, great. What I want you to do now is step up on two and two. What we're gonna do is grab the band. Now, for those of you that want to do, <laughs> Bob, how did you know? Bob, it was on the news everywhere, mate everywhere. So <laughs> I'm not even going to push it any further from there. Let's, let's keep it right there. So what we're going to do now is for those of you that feel comfortable, grab both bands, especially um, if you're more advanced, you'll know. Now remember at any point, if you feel unsafe, 
you drop the bands and grab the poles. The bands are fine. They've got the rubber handles or the soft handle, that's the foam handles. They can hit the ground, they won't break. And just grab and grab those poles if you need them for safety. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna hold on to both bands or one if you'd like. And if you're holding on to one, change when you feel like it. Okay, we're balanced here, find the middle. Now what I want you to do is do into a slight squat and lift the bands up and just hold them. Bring your hands so they're facing each other and just hold in here. Now pull that chest or the shoulders back, chest up. My knees are on a slight bend and I'm holding onto those bands. They're pulled up so I feel the resistance. Now what I want you to do is just rock side to side, slow. Do not let the board touch the ground. And notice how you'll feel those back muscles begin to work. Your arm muscles are working because there's a constant resistance there. And I'm feeling that I'm pushing side to side, but the board is not touching the ground. I'm recovering before it even touches the ground. That means my recovery, my brain recovery, my balance pressure point is reacting because I realize I've gone to a certain point and I come back. Good. Now come and stand up, relax the hands back and just rock side to side. You'll notice by standing up how the muscles now are released both in your arms because they're relaxed down and in your legs, we've taken some of that resistance training off. Okay, excellent. Now what I want you to do, come back in again, butt goes back, go into a slight squat. Now turn your hands forward and bring the, the um, handles up and hold it in this position here. Just hold. Now stand up, slight bend, stand up, slight bend. And notice how you've got your proprioceptive connection reacting. Feel the tightness now in the firmness of your biceps and feel how those leg muscles are working because they're constantly engaged in a dynamic tension because they can't relax. But at the same time, because they're, they're moving, we're building that resistance and strength to be able to stand up out of a chair, go up or down the stairs. We're increasing the strength of the legs. Good. Now come up, drop the hands, and just rock side to side. Whew. You can feel how your heart rate um, is increasing doing these exercises, but you'll also notice how your body temperature is beginning to go up because now the muscles are working. The um, heat is being generated by the resistance work being, do, being done. And that internal cooling system is now saying, okay, we're working. It's time to again, turn on those coolers, which is why water is so important, but also we'll start sweating because it's releasing that heat. Okay, good, one more time. Come and stand on two and two. Now what I want you to do is pull the elbows up, hold them here. Now go into that squat and stand. Now this is a great exercise for posture because by pulling the shoulders back and having that resistance, we're strengthening up those back muscles. And as we're doing the squats, we're adding resistance as we stand up but because you're not letting go as you go down, we're keeping those muscles in the back in a tightened position that pulls your shoulders back. Great for posture, because then as they strengthen and tighten in a good way and stretch out that chest, keep going. When you, when you get into regular life, you're used to engaging those muscles. Last one, and come and put the bands back. Now rock side to side. What I want you to do is push down with your right leg, step back with your left, and just roll those shoulders out. We just work those back muscles. Just roll them out, there you go, and now roll them forward. Excellent, brilliant, there you go. Just loosening. I can really feel how those muscles worked in holding those bands. Okay, now we're gonna do the next exercise. I want you to step your right foot Onto the number two, keep your left leg on the ground, take the right hand band, and I want you to, in here, um, take it inside the pole. We haven't moved the poles inside. Now what I want you to do is pull back and down, almost like a um, saw action in here, when you're uh, sawing the log, we're just in here. So notice as we go in here, your weight goes on your right leg, then you push back on your left. 
So all we're doing is we're strengthening that back again and twisting, we're engaging the core. Four to go, three more. And this could be something as simple, change arms, put your left leg on number two, right leg's back on the floor, take your right hand, grab the left band, and we're just pulling across. So twist and pull, twist, pull. And all you're doing in here, again, is learning to have resistance on the front leg as you pull back. So think about maybe you're walking your dog who's getting a little um, too excited. There you go. Getting a little too excited and we're pulling them back. There you go. One more. Good. So again, we're developing the strength. My dog's put, I can put my pressure on and pull the dog back. I can be here, I can pull them back. So they're not challenging our balance as much as we're now gaining the strength to hold them. It could be so many different things. I know Craig, I see you wrote, I can't see what you wrote yet, but I know you're getting ready to go and compete in the men's championship of the tug of war in the Olympics. So I know this is an exercise that you're gonna to have to be doing, Craig, in here to get that strength to pull your opponents over. I'm just joking, here we go. And 10 on this side, pull, one. Transfer your weight, front leg, back leg. Front leg, back leg. And again, you can hold on if you want, or you can put your hand on your leg for that stability. There you go, good. Eight, I think that's eight. Nine and 10, there you go. Now, left leg goes on the side, put this in here and pull, one and two and three and four. Four, we're pulling across, twist the waist, five, six, and seven. I'm gonna put my hand on my knee, eight, and nine, and 10. Okay, brilliant, excellent, great job. Now what we're gonna do now in here, the last exercise we're gonna do, take your, not, oh, this is with the bands, take your right leg, place it into the middle of the board, now what I want you to do is take your left hand, grab the right band, and I want you to do the same motion, but don't twist, just pull it across and down. And I want you to feel, I'm gonna take my hand off, resist the pressure of the pull with your foot. As I pull, the board wants to go up, so I'm pushing with the outside of my right leg. This again is engaging strength in my foot, in my leg to resist, and I'm not twisting, so I'm again able to focus on the center of my foot in here, good. Try and keep that board. Now you can hold on if you need to, but again, ideally, we wanna feel the resistance, not with the arm controlling the board, but the leg controlling the board, the foot. Here we go. Left foot goes immediately in the middle, grab the band, and here we go. Pull, one, and two. So I'm gonna push a little bit more with the outside of my left foot, three. Don't let that board touch the ground. Four, the side of the board. Of course it's touching the ground. Six, and seven, and eight. Two to go, nine, and last one, 10. There you go, place it back. That just gave us a little extra strength training. Now all we do is just roll that foot out, roll the ankle out, so we loosen up where we just had the pressure. I'm gonna change, and you'll notice if you were adapting pressure to your feet, um, uh, that again, just by rolling them out, we just loosen up all those pressure, give the foot the freedom to just relax. And let's change. There you go. Whew. Okay, we've got Two more exercises to do. This one, I'm gonna need you to grab your chair. This is gonna be a tough exercise. I want it where you've got one foot, actually both feet, I'm just gonna move it slightly here. Both feet are touching the back of the board. Right, so all we're gonna to do to start with is on the poles, come and push and stand up. And then come and sit back down. And come and stand up and come and sit down. 
Come and stand up and sit down. Last one, stand up and sit down. Now, this is where it's gonna be a huge challenge. What I want you to do is take your right foot and have the toe on your left foot touch the floor. Now stand up and you'll feel that you're standing up on one leg. So we're gonna do it again. The toe of my left foot is on the floor, but my right foot, the whole foot is on. Now lean forward, use the poles and stand up by using the minimal amount of weight on your left foot and it's your right leg that's doing all the work standing up. There you go. Now, one little tip here, last one. Lean more forward and lean to your right. There you go, good. Now I'm gonna change my feet. I'm gonna my left foot, my right foot toe is on the ground, and I'm gonna stand up and slowly come down. Now, if you're struggling with this, use the opposite foot more, right? Use the left foot. I'll try and do it with one leg without the right foot touching the ground. I can't do it on my right leg because of the injury, but I'm gonna try and stand and engage that one leg. But if I need help, I'm gonna to touch that right foot on the floor, and as I push up, I'll have just a little bit of help from my right leg. Now, lean forward, put your weight onto the poles, lean forward towards the pole, and stand up, come back down, and again, if you need to do both legs, do both. Here we go, one more time. Stand up and come and sit back down. That's tough, put both feet on the board and just rock them out. So again, we get activity, we get motion going on, we get pressure point, but we're relaxing down. Now, we're only doing that exercise once today. We're gonna build it up over time where we go from two legs to focused on one leg to only one leg, because imagine, if you can stand up out of a chair on one leg, how strong are you and how simple when you get to a restaurant and you're just gonna stand up and walk out, you've got so much um, power. And again, it's slow movement. Technique is everything. So remember, whenever you go to stand up, lean your chest over your knees, put your hands on your knees and push up. You always start by leaning forward and as you push, bring that head back. Okay, we're going on to the last exercise. What I want you to do is step your feet on two and two. There you go. And just rock it side to side. Perfect. Now, take the right hand. Now, what I want you to do is just lift the hand as you're rocking over the band and down. Over, I mean, sorry, over the pole. So we're just here lifting up and over. When I go to the right, I take the band to the right. When I push to the left, I bring it back. So we're just in here working this exercise, which is strengthening your upper body to lift a bag. And at the same time, your legs adjusting as you're lifting. Last one. Good, bring it across to this uh, right now. Take the left. Remember, we push to the left. Now lift up and down, lift up and down, your elbow will begin to go, and then you're gonna incorporate your forearm, your wrist strength, there you go, pushing side to side, excellent. Up and over, up and over, up and over, last one, up and over, good. Now comes the final challenge of the day, we're gonna do the same thing, but in a balanced position. So grab the right, last one. We've only got five of these each side. That's 10 times over. You ready? Balance. Up, down. That's two. Three. Keep that balance. Four. And five. And six. And seven. And eight. And nine. Last one. 10. Swap it over. Try and keep that balance as you're swapping. Here we go. 10. And one and two, and three, and four. Hey, Pat, five, I see you left a message, can't see what yet, six, seven, last two, eight, nine, last one, 10. Whew. Uh, Craig, I see you left a message earlier as well, I can't see what that is, but I'll certainly come and read them in a minute. Okay, 
That's the end of today's workout. We're just rocking it out side to side. Whew. There you go, brilliant. Great job. There's a lady walking by, looking in the window. Good morning, come and join us next time. Okay, what I want you to do, step back carefully. I'm gonna turn and just move my chair back and grab a quick drink of water. Stay with me here. We're gonna go into our cool down. So, so important. I'm just gonna see those messages real quick before we start away. Um, uh, Craig, that's great. You like the idea of using the red boiling bag. It actually feels good. You're able to do some warm-up exercise. That's awesome, Craig. See what I mean? You're the, and I keep pointing. I don't know why I keep pointing. You're the exact example of what I'm saying. We think we can't do stuff because we have a slight pain. Um, and at the same time, people would tell you, stop, rest, relax. With my injury, I told you, um, in hospital two, two Thursdays ago, it's two weeks today, the doctors told me, go and buy a scooter, put your knee on it so you can scoot around, you'll be on crutches for four to six weeks, you won't be back to physical activity for five to six months. I'm two weeks in, and if I had to listen to them, I'd still be laying in bed probably, feeling sorry for myself. But you guys inspire me, because I wanted to get back and teach, because I know how important it is, but you inspire me, again, to, it's not about proving doctors wrong, it's about, um, it's about uh, proving to doctors how amazing you are. Don't let them lump you in a box. So proud of you, Craig, for getting in here and, and trying, seeing it, and then doing a little bit of exercise. But again, keep listening to your body. Pat, you just left the dentist. You're gonna do the session this afternoon. Uh, we've got a good exercise for you to chew on today. I'll tell you what, you're gonna chew on a few of these exercises. Betsy, you're awesome. Thanks so much. And Bob, what did you say, Bob? <laughs> Bob, you worked you hard. Okay, what I want you to do, push the board to the right, put your heel on the edge of the board, just get that little stretch forward. There you go. Oh, it feels so good. And change the other side. Oh, God, that feels good. You know when you've been working out and you feel kind of sore and those muscles um, are restricting your movement, you start to stretch and it feels so brilliant. Uh, and let's change again. Other side, feel that stretch. Gosh, it's so good. I can feel the stretch down the back of my legs. And change. Other side, there you go. Whew. I love these. Wait until you see what I'm bringing to 60 up to help with stretching. I'm so excited about it. It's gonna be in, I'm blue. I'm now stretching my calf out. So we stretch the higher part of the hamstring. Um, and now you'll see my heels on the ground, ball is on the edge of the board. Now let's just change it up. Good. It's so good. It's funny because, um, I remember many years ago, and these are getting into stories now, many years ago I broke my toe and ended up um, having a neuroma, well they said it was a neuroma. I was in a boot for eight months, I couldn't walk. I'd wake up in the morning, every morning, before I was even awake, I'd try and move my foot and I couldn't move it. So for eight months, changed left foot stretching, for eight months, um, I was in the worst condition, worse than that. They wanted to operate, they were gonna go in here, cut the nerves, and I said, I don't want people touching my feet because the nerves are so important down there. And they said, you know, the chances of doing it wrong were pretty high. Good, come back, just kick your, kick your butt now. And I went and saw an incredible doctor, Dr. Raymond Hall, who said, you don't have a neuroma, you have an edema. And um, he massaged my foot, reactivated the tendons all in one session. And I walked out of his office um, without having the boot on, but it did take me three months to be able to go up on my toes, my left foot. I couldn't go up on my toes or anything. I couldn't, uh, I had no strength in the foot. Good, all I want you to do is just step to the side and just tap your feet. But I had to commit to reactivating the body. Now, all it was was a doctor had given a different prognosis, which was his right to do. 
But I was smart enough to, instead of saying, I'll listen to what you say, and I'm gonna get a second opinion, a third opinion, and a fourth opinion, until I found out what was really wrong, then I had to be willing to do the work. And it didn't come back easy. Okay, what I want you to do now, take your arms, cross them over, let's stretch out that back muscle. Arms grab and just roll forward. But at the end of the day, no matter what happened, I had to want to get better. No matter at the end of the day, I had to do the work. And the only way I could do that was to set goals because it's very easy to feel sorry for yourself or feel limited or listen to people that make your life less challenging, even though they're taking away the um, potential that you have. Sometimes just roll those shoulders out. Sometimes it's easier to ignore your inner voice and use other people's voices as the excuse to not have to do the work. So that's why I say all the time, look back to look forward. There you go, good. Take the fingers, interlock them, push them down to the ground, just feel that stretch, hold it for a second. If it's a little tight, just release the hands off and then go again. But that's why I say, set yourself goals, set yourself targets, write them down, cross off the calendar days. See, I've got some amazing commercials that I want to shoot. Um, now shake those hands out eventually. Um, all about seniors, about aging, about the misconception of limiting life. And instead, when you've got yourself a goal, you can go and achieve it, but you've got to be willing to put in the work and uh, interlock your hands behind, just stretch that back. And sometimes when you're chasing those goals, it's painful. It's unbelievable, you know, where you go through and you go through those aches and pains and think it's going to get worse, but your body's incredible. As long as it's not injury pain, it's development pain, eventually the pain goes away and you get better and better and doing things, just roll those shoulders out again, and doing things you never thought that you'd be able to do again, and it becomes normal. So set your mind and believe in you. Okay, next thing I want to do, we're gonna grab the chair again. This is a great little exercise to stretch. I'm gonna set it up here. All we're gonna do now is take your leg and cross it over the other leg. I'm gonna hold on and then I'm just gonna pull, my, my right leg is over my left, I'm just gonna pull my left leg to the side and feel the strength, the stretch down the side of your hip. So, we'll do it again. Lift your leg up, cross it over your left knee, just relax it. Now hold on to your right leg with your left hand and then just pull that knee, I'm pulling my left knee to the side and feel that stretch down the outside of the hip. Excellent. There you go. And the more you pull, the more stretch you'll feel. Let's change sides. I lift up my left leg, cross it over my right. I'm gonna use my right hand to just lock it into place. Now I'm just gonna pull my right knee to the side and try and keep my, I'm not gonna let my body go with it. I'm gonna try and keep my body here. And it's such a small movement. You don't need to have much as you move. Just feel that stretch down the side of the hip. Feels so good, there you go. And one more time, I'm just gonna, again, pull it slightly in here. Awesome. Bring both feet down. Now, grab your right shin with both hands and just pull it up towards your chest. Feels good. Change uh, your both hands on the shin of your left leg and just pull it up to stretch. Craig, these are good little stretches for you too, my friend. Um, even with the back injury, the one where you cross over, just grab the leg again, where you cross over and pull, will give you a little bit of stretch into that, you know, the, the rear, the hip, and then into the glute. It's a very gentle stretch. But again, it's good to activate those, um, the tightness that you're getting, and do it slow. Don't try and force the stretch. It's better to just get it there and just hold it, and then pull a little bit more if you feel like it's now no longer stretching, but just hold it in that place. Give the muscle, the tendons, the ligaments time to be able to relax so you can stretch them. Okay, shake those hands out again. And that is the end of today's class. Thank you so much for being here. Love to you all. Um, let's just go back into some of these messages. Um, Pat, there you go, I told you. You just left the dentist. I'm gonna be going to the dentist soon, I think. Gotta go in, get those, uh, get everything, make sure it's all in good working order. Um, Betsy, you're amazing. Um, always love having you and you're an inspiration, so thank you so much. Uh, Rosa, uh, it's mindset. 
Um, absolute um, mindset is everything. Even if you're going through the bad times, <laughs> George, um, even if you're going through the bad times, um, you keep a positive mindset knowing that everything works out in the end. Maybe not the way you want it, but it always works out. And keep pushing through, but smart. Absolutely. This is one of the things, this is what's so great um, about working with you, but at the same time, going through injuries myself, is it forces me to have to, to um, confirm, it doesn't force me, let me say that. It gives me the opportunity to show the difference in a negative mindset or a positive mindset. I have to live it. Again, one day I'll tell you all my story of the different things that I've gone through um, that I think will be surprising um, to so many people. But if I haven't suffered, I don't understand. And if I don't understand, how can I recover? Because I haven't experienced it myself. And it's so um, dynamic to go through these injuries and send the love to my body. I, not at one point did I turn around and say, oh, my calf, or I can't believe this. It was like, okay, you're strong. You're going to get better. We're going to get through this together. I'm supporting you because I love, I don't want to lose my calf muscle. I don't want it gone. So I'm going to keep working on that. Um, and the positive mindset, it's incredible. If I had to listen to what the doctor said, believed it, and just did what they said, like I said, I wouldn't be here today teaching. And so and I'm dripping in sweat as well, which is great. I wouldn't have that. So thank you all for that as well. Um, but listening to your body, doing small movements or resting it if you need to, but working other body parts to keep the body, you know, the, the, um, <sighs> the immune system functioning and feeding the oxygen and then slowly challenging yourself. And if it hurts, stop immediately. If you feel the pain, stop immediately. Do the smart things, but find things you can do. And all of you, just positive mindset. Um, Bob Eubanks, you need to sit, uh, you, you do that sit down stretch and it really helped um, your lower back pain. That's great, Bob. Yeah, anytime you can stretch out strength and stretch the hips out. I say a lot of times back pain is not actually the back. It's the change in the alter of the skeletal structure. And by strengthening up other muscles or loosening up, excuse me, for me when I was racing bikes, it was my hip flexors. My lower back pain came from my tight hip flexors. But you'd never think of that. All it done because I was sitting so much, and for those of you that sit a lot, um, the hip flexors tighten up, so when you stand, it tilts the pelvis under, and as the pelvis tilts under, it puts pressure on your lower back. So keep, um, anyway, I'm just rambling on today. It's great being here with you. Um, George, oof, I love that. Um, big George, keep it going, mate. Keep fighting back and getting through those recoveries. And I hope you're doing fantastic. I know you've gone through a lot recently um, and always cheering you on, my friend. Kirk, good session again. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here and helping me make this a better session. Without you guys, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have this energy and enthusiasm to, um, to keep, keep working through it all. It's, um, you guys are, are, are so important to me, so thank you. Um, and again, stay cool. Hope you're doing great. And uh, lots and lots and lots of water in there. So with that being said, have a fantastic Thursday. Don't forget tomorrow is uh, Debbie Sieber. She's going to be here. Um, the, the Friday workout, 9.30 Pacific Standard Time. Come back, celebrate with her. Look forward to the weekend. Have a fantastic uh, time until we meet again on Tuesday. Love to you all. And thanks so much for being here. Big to you. Bye-bye.